Hello everybody, it's me again and uh, welcome to another exciting video. Now this is going to be more exciting than probably than the rest of the ones that you've learned uh, because it talks about how do you do a sign up process with SMS confirmation uh, in your mobile app. This is very similar to what uh, WhatsApp does it and, and many other apps. All right, so let's take a look at how it's done and what we're going to cover. We're going to talk about the diagram, of, you know, the architecture of your app, the, what happens inside the mobile app, what happens inside uh, on the server side, and what about this external API, okay? Here's a diagram. What do we have here? Usually, we start with the requirements or the needs for uh, uh, to solve a particular problem. In this case, we wanted to solve how we verify that this is that mobile, that person that uses this app is the one that owns that mobile. He's not giving us a bogus phone number. Okay, and this is what how it works. We have an app on sitting on a mobile. This app usually requires a sign up process. And this sign up sign up process happens only once. I'm not gonna do a sign up process every time or I'm not gonna do a login every time. Once I do it once, the information is stored here, the credentials is stored here, and I can send it any every time I wanna I start the app, I can send it to the server, make sure that I still am still okay to use this app or not. Okay. So let's go ahead and start. We have, in this easiest case, we have here uh, a screen, a view controller that collects user information. And the basic information that we need is just the mobile app and maybe a name, all right? Mobile number and a name. And then they send this request to a server usually have. We have usually a server. And this server can be your own server. You can have a uh, third party uh, solution. It can be a cloud. But we elected to do it our own because uh, it gives us a lot of flexibility. Okay, it, it, it takes longer, but it gives you a lot of flexibility. All right. So here we have uh, the sign up request. We send it to the server through a web service, like what we've done with the JSON tutorials, and this usually have a phone number and the name. In the server, there is some programming done. Somebody usually does this for us, or if you're, uh, you're familiar, you could do it both. On the server, you, have to, you need to be able to take the information sent to you and basic some of them do some basic validation making sure that the information sending us are correct and if it's correct for example i don't have the same number signed up already or if it's allowed to do sign up i can need i need to say make sure that it's a different phone or you know bunch of stuff so you can do all that logic in here on the server side and if, it, if it's okay we send the result back to the mobile app if the result back, mm -hmm. and the way I'm doing it, I'm sending it, we, we will be sending it, uh, sending like a response object instead of just okay, not okay. And the response object can have many things in it. It could have a bunch of data, including like error code and the description of the error, or it could have the okay, and here's the value for the SMS verification code. I do this, so I don't have to do it again when we receive it, go and check again. You send it with the response object. At the same time, we send that object to uh, SMS service provider or a telecommunication service provider, and they will be responsible for sending the SMS. All I have to do here is follow the protocol that they provide to us on how do you send a message to this. Usually, it's just an HTTP request with the uh, parameters required to send that SMS, uh, SMS message. And then finally, uh, the SMS message is received on the app. The app got this response and waiting for a confirmation uh, on the confirmation screen. And then we say, okay, this SMS code matches 
the object response that that was sent to me, the value of the object response? If it is yes, then we say good. We navigate to another screen. At the same time, we send it to the send information to the server with the user detail. I'm okay. Please add this person to your registration process uh, or your registration database, and it goes to the database. Now, why did I do it after the fact that I, after I received the SMS code, and not when I say send it and send them the confirmation because it. They could have canceled anywhere in here. So I do it after the confirmation is received and the information valid validated. We send it to the server. And there is one crucial process that we do after, um, before during that process too. That is we store the credentials of that user on the device itself. Why do you do this? Because I don't want to every time go and ask the user to enter a username and a password. It's done, saved, and every time I need it, I just simply retrieve it from the device and then send it to the uh, send it to the uh, uh, to the server. All right. So that is that part. There's a lot of things happening here. And it's not an easy thing to do, but hopefully we will be able to go through it in the next several videos. Here is the, on the mobile side, the things that you need to know, and we will cover. On the mobile side, we need to cover something called singleton objects. Singleton objects, if you're familiar with static uh, objects, it's a, it's a one copy in your app, and this uh, copy or object, contains the data necessary for me to use it throughout my app. So I don't have to pass this object throughout, you know, from to different classes. If I need it, I go to this class. It's a singleton class, meaning static. Give me the value that I need. You need to be familiar with data model. We've done that in the core data. We've done that in the previous uh, classes when we defined classes, store. And we will define a class called like user data here. We will also define, we will use a way to store the information. Now, previously, we used core data to store information. Now, here, what you can do, you can, uh, we will use NS archiving or our, the archiving process that exists with iOS to store it locally on the, on the device. You also need to be able to do web services because there's a lot of interaction, especially at the, at the beginning, with the server. And finally, we need to be able to navigate the screens programmatically without having to do uh, without relying on the storyboard okay on the server side you need to be familiar with some scripting language such as a programming language such as php java c sharp and then you need to because there's a lot of logic involved in here a lot of database access a lot of database programming so you need to be able to do that and usually, typically, you don't do that if you're an iOS developer. You do this on the iOS, but, and you rely on somebody else doing it for you. But I tell you from experience, I've tried that many times, and believe me, it puts your uh, development uh, uh, a lot, and a lot of times on hold because you're waiting on somebody to do things for you, okay? Now, if you're within the same team, it's not a problem, but if you're having somebody else to do it for you and they're not available, it's a problem. So it will be very helpful if you can do this part. And then the database. You need a database where you can store the information. Now, if you're using PHP, MySQL is very common. I also Java, uh, MySQL is very common. Uh, I don't know what happened here. And uh, finally, I need to be able to call another website, pass them, like a web service, pass them the information, and then they will send the data back to us. That is it in a nutshell, what we're going to do. Uh, we will start basics, and then we will build up the process as we go. All right, and I will see you in the next video. This is going to be exciting. Lots of work, but exciting. All right, I'll see you in the next.